Hi, this is Guy Pearce, and you're listening to The Bob Show on UBN Radio. Come on, girls. Let's go to The Bob Show. Exclusively on UBNRadio.com. And now, let there be dancing and singing. It is Monday, September 14th, 2015, and uh, oh, I hope I remember how to do this. Sitting next to me, my dear friend, she I, I couldn't think of anybody sweeter or kinder to help soften the blow <laughs> <laughs> and get me back in the saddle. Please welcome my dear friend, Miss Jordan Lloyd. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> a little bit of a delay, but it's okay. Thank you. Oh, I honestly, I, I've heard rumors this is supposed to feel like riding a bike. Mm. Yeah. If it is, I would have fallen off and skinned my knees by now. <laughs> I've been here for an hour trying to look at all of this this technology, which is exactly the same as when I left a well, year and a we half were, ago. <laughs> when I got here, we were actually talking about it, and you told me a year and a half. It's a year and I a half. I cannot believe that. It has been a year and a half. I think our last show was... I think March of 2014. I think so. I don't, I don't think we've done a show since then. Um, but I'm looking at this chat room. You guys are blowing up the chat room. And it is the most wonderful feeling because I wasn't sure if anybody was even going to tune in. Oh, my gosh. People love you, Bob. Oh, stop it. They people love you. People miss it. Stop it. They miss us. How about that? Don't love it. You know they're <laughs> really here because of me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, I'm just joking. she moves I'm to Hollywood and look what we got. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> I, five minutes before the show started, I said, oh, there's 50 people in the chat room. And Jordan said, that's it? <laughs> I better tweet. <laughs> The old Jordan would have just sat back here and been like, well, that's okay. At least somebody showed up. <laughs> oh, I don't even know where, where where to start. We have so many things to talk about. So I figured out um, it's it's been a year and a half since since I've done this, as we've just mentioned. And uh, so much has changed. Yes. I'm pretty sure I was crying the last time. I was going <laughs> to say that whenever you were talking and like saying that it ended in 20 or 2014 mm -hmm. in March. But then I was like, no, maybe I shouldn't. Go it was there. a rough time. Oh, we can go there because we're not there anymore. <laughs> okay. We, we, we can take that time machine. And I, th and I think we will. So I just want to let everybody know that is tuning in. So uh, starting next week, we will do it more. This is the weirdest thing that Siri does. Why? So Siri heard me say something that is similar to the word Siri. And now she thinks I'm talking to her. That's weird. I hate her. I hate Siri. In case anybody's wondering, my I'm, Siri not, I'm never not talking works. about. I'm not talking about Tom Cruise's daughter either. I'm talking about my phone. <laughs> um. Wait. So <laughs> okay. Let's get back. It's on gonna track. take me a while to remember. There's cameras and a microphone on. Um. But so as I was saying, um, about we were a year going and a half ago, back a year and a half yeah. ago. You said you. Oh, were about cry, the show. About you? the show. So, but, so just to get some business out of the way. Um, the show is only going to be on Mondays, every Monday at 4 p.m. right here, UBN Radio. I'm not coming back daily. Uh, I've got other stuff going on that, of course, I'll continue to tell you always about throughout the hour. Uh, and tonight, today's show, I just thought would be really fun. Just the two of us catching up, catching up on the last year and a half. Things we've had, I've had major things happen in my life. You've had some major things happen in your life. 
Um, so I just figured tonight, just the two of us would sit here and talk. Starting next week, we'll have uh, guests. Jeff will be back. Jeff will be in his regular seat uh, here as my co-host. And getting and out of our hot apartments. <laughs> this weather, you guys. I, we, I don't have air conditioning. I'm sure Bob does. But I do. <laughs> oh, I hate you. I've been sweating. You're coming in over my for apartment. dinner tonight. You get to come sit in my air conditioning. That's why I am because I'm not cooking. Because <laughs> I, I sweat while I, I cook. In, I invite you over all the time to come enjoy my air conditioning. Well, now this is you guys. I Ubered it over here, and yeah. then um, and now and now we're having margaritas. Yeah. After you seven days of drinking, <laughs> I feel like such an alcoholic. I drank for seven days straight, guys. Keep your keep your eyes on Periscope later tonight, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a number one rule I have. Me and no Jeff have. No Periscoping, no periscoping, while, periscoping while, drunk. while drinking. That is a smart rule for you to have. <laughs> exactly. Because I don't want to wake up and be like, what did I say on no, there? And being I sloppy and gross. Oh. I can't even. I, don't, I already don't like thinking the next morning, what did I say without camera or video. Yes. I can't imagine... If I had to look at it the, at the next day and be like, "Hi, everybody, how's yes. that?" because you think you make sense, and then you look at yourself and like you're hot and you're sweaty and you've been drinking and you're like, "Ah!" Oh yeah. Oh, I'm so sure that while I'm drinking, I'm just, I'm so cool. You're I'm the best. Fun. No, I'm Bob is so fun. <laughs> Bob's a little sassy when he's drinking. He gets a little sassy with me. <laughs> I get sassy just in general. Who are, who are we kidding? But um, it is hot in here, isn't it? I forgot about that part, these lights. That's why I wore this. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I know. We had to adjust the camera because you look topless at first. <laughs> is that a bad <laughs> so thing? Like, now that we're no longer on in the mornings, things are going to change in the afternoons. Ah, I forgot champagne. Well, we'll have champagne when we get We home. don't need champagne. <laughs> I was going to get champagne so that we could sit and have champagne because it's the oh. first afternoon show. I know. I feel so special that you asked me. Are you I, kidding me? Oh, I was, I literally, as soon as Jeff said that he wasn't going to be able to, I'm like, I didn't think of anybody else. I literally went straight to you because oh. I was like, it'll be perfect. Because I just wanted, as, as we can tell, I have, not, I have very little prepared other than I know the stories that I want to share and talk about. But um, I just knew that, it, I mean, come on, you and I, if I, I can fill an hour with anybody, it's you. Oh, <laughs> I know. We can just talk about anything. The only thing I have to remind you is there are people listening. Because I know you'll start talking, and the next thing I know, we'll be like, we weren't supposed to say that out loud. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff, he, I think Jeff already has it down pat. He gives me, like, a look, and that means shut up, Jordan, and then I'll stop. I'm just so glad that there's, like, very few secrets at this point now. Because for the longest time, like, you guys were always had something going on that, like, we couldn't talk about. Oh, cause starting with, so let's talk, let's just jump right in. Okay. Marriage boot camp. Yes. What became of that? Um, I mean, okay, I will say marriage boot camp was actually the a positive. biggest nightmare of my life. I'm glad you let me cut you off. So yeah. <laughs> I and mean, then Bob has every right. He was so scared. And that you guys didn't see, though, in that first I'm episode so I got cut. with Kendra and her mom, that wedding chapel scene, Bob was there. And, um, yeah, they, I don't know why they cut you out of it, but each person had to stand up and, um, kind of have like a reason of why you shouldn't get yeah, married. I, let, let me tell you, let me, I'll, I'll give my perspective of it and then you can walk a show. I, okay. I never watched a single episode of it. I'm be perfectly honest. Okay. Um, so, okay. So, je so I guess when you guys went into the house or were going into the house, they, you guys had to write down like three of your closest friends that were like. In the vicinity or whatever. Yes, and nobody would do it. Everybody's like, no, <laughs> and they kept bugging you. They kept so. For, so first of all, I was like, oh, that's nice that they gave my number, but like literally, like the producers would call me. Uh, well, because uh, oh, so first they called me and interviewed me. Yes, I guess they interviewed everybody on the list because yes. they wanted to see like where the weaknesses are in your relationship yes. and what's wrong and you know what you guys need. They want to get the cracks else. out. They want to try to get the dirt. Exactly. And there wasn't really much. I mean, Jeff and I. Are like every couple, like probably just like you and your guy, you have your mo you, moment. Of course, everybody has moments. Everybody but does, but I think they wanted more and they couldn't get it because all our friends are like, there's nothing major going on. Like Jeff and I are very upfront and honest about things. And I mean, I don't have anything in the hidden in the yeah. closet. And well, I don't think he does well, and, that, and that's just it. So, and so, well, so the first time they called me, it was just to interview me yes. and just to say, you know, like to give stuff on you. So I'm, I'm so, and so I, you know, and so I had called Jeff, and Jeff said like, "Oh yeah, you can tell him whatever you want. Right. It's fine." I said, "Okay, great." So I talked to them. Well, then the next day, they or two days later, they call one of the producers calls me, and they're like, "So Bob, we'd really love to have you come on to the show to come and be a part of this, and you know, maybe do this thing." And I'm like, "Well, mm, you gotta tell me some more information because I don't really know that I want to do this." And and they're like, "Well, what's gonna happen is we're gonna need you to stand up and say why they shouldn't get married." Yep. And I was like, okay, mm I'm definitely not going to do that. 
Um, and I'm like, I'm not comfortable doing that. I think it's a terrible idea. And they said, oh, okay, thank you. Then the producer above that producer called me and once again said, we'd really love you to come do this. And I said, mm, no, no, it's not going to happen. I love how they kept bugging you to come on there and then the, you get cut. Well, that's the funny. Do, you just jumped to the punchline. But, yeah, so the fourth producer, it took four producers calling me. The fourth producer, and I, I literally said to them, I'm like, here's the thing. I will do this. Because of the, and now in the back of my mind, I'm also thinking to myself, I got to go in and protect you guys. Because I'm like, at least if I go in and I'm the one who does it, right. then at least I can kind of control what's said. Because otherwise, you're going to be, I'm, I'm spoiler alert, like the the Jersey Shore person. I don't even know if it got, if it even aired. But like the, the Jersey Shore person, they hired an extra to stand up and say, I'm concerned about his oh, whatever. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Oopsie, I don't know. I think I signed a contract, so I'm not supposed to say that. But um Anyways, but so that's what I was afraid of for you guys was that it was going to be some because it's not a pivotal to the story, but it's just it's sort of like to create right. that scene as we know. So, so anyway, so I so I I say to them, I'm like, here's the thing: if I look bad, their fans are not that's only. What Bob said. I, he I was said, so scared of the I J. Said, Joe I said, fans. I said, yeah, I said the J. Joe fans. I was not wrong. I said. If I look bad and I look like I don't want Jeff and Jordan to get married, not only are they going to come and burn down my house, they're going to come down and burn <laughs> down your production office. <laughs> I said, I said, so you need to be prepared for this. Yeah. You, we need to be very careful and artfully craft what I'm going to say. And they said, I promise. And so they brought me in two hours early to sit down with a writer, and they had like 20 things that they wanted me to say. And there were 18 of them. I said, absolutely not. So I got down to like the two things that I was willing to say. Right. <laughs> And then, of course, I'm nervous because then I'm feeling fat and I had to be in a suit because I'm at this wedding. And so this is this is some real backstage stuff for everybody listening. So I'm there in the audience and you guys aren't allowed to know that I'm there. Well, I no, I know. So I'm sitting I'm sitting in the back of the chapel. So the the lead up here for anybody who doesn't know what's going on, it's a TV show marriage boot camp. And they stand the people giving they're basically they're like okay if you guys are all willing to get married right now and so they bring each couple up and they act like they're going to marry them right, right there in this moment and then they say is there anybody in the room who thinks they should not get married so uh and so at each 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 couple has somebody standing up and saying they should and well so now jordan's starting to look around the room because and i see bob <laughs> and i'm like and she sees me <laughs> and i start waving well the whole time jeff is looking straight ahead and i'm like trying to get his attention i'm looking over at him like bob is right here something's going on like i know something's about to happen so i knew it and then i, don't, I can't remember it did i get jeff's attention or he had no idea i don't yeah think no you got jeff's attention because eventually jeff turns around and looks at me too and then I, at that point i just like ducked under the chair i didn't i didn't know what else and to bob do. i felt so bad after he like when he was there he was like don't be mad at me i was like oh because my well because so so on top of it all so then i finally have to stand up so they're like you know is there anybody here who thinks they should get married so i raise my hand i stand up and i say you know, and I so everybody in the chat room, this is what everybody wants to know. So I, this is what I came up with. I said, I said, I absolutely love you guys, mm -hmm. and I'm very much looking forward to the two of you getting married. Um, I said, the only thing that I'm concerned about yeah. is you guys have just moved in together for the first time, and I'm just concerned that maybe you need some more time to get to cohabitate and live together. But that I, was understandable. Oh, my God. But it was also so made up. I could not have cared less about it. <laughs> yeah, I know. But, you, but I was like, it. but I'm like, it's either that or else I'd be like, you guys shouldn't get married. He's too old for I don't even know. Like, I mean, the things they wanted me to say right, right. were so ridiculous. So then and then here's really where I was really most upset was because I couldn't reach out to you guys. And I was I just had this vision of like Jeff being like, Oh uh, yeah, of course Bob decides he's gonna go be in the audience. <laughs> he's gotta be on camera. He's gotta be on my show. And I'm like, I just so I'm like horrified. I hated the whole thing. Nobody believes me. I hated, hated, hated that whole experience. And then sure enough, the episode aired and I was cut. <laughs> I couldn't believe it because I was waiting to see you because I was like, oh, I can't wait to see Bob on here. Uh -huh. But maybe good thing because your house didn't get burned down. <laughs> I know. You guys, we filmed this a year ago. Was it? It was the other. It was uh, oh a month. Oh, almost. Yeah, you're right. Uh, it, almost it a like, year ago. Was it Jan? No, it was, no, it was like this. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Wow, that is so crazy. Yeah. So what became of the rest of the? I didn't even watch what happened with the it season. It was. It was good. I mean. Jeff and I took it serious. It was definitely uncomfortable, like, saying your feelings were... Because you're going to a different level. Normally, people in Big Brother, they see us goofing off and playing around. This is more like you're talking about your feelings. You're saying, like, what hurts you? 
what uh, and then he's saying what things that I do that hurt him and it kind of it stings a little bit when you hear uh, your partner say that to you oh yeah but it really helped get a lot out because Jeff does not talk about his feelings or open up at all and uh, I think people saw that on there and he really was trying and I knew he was and at least he took it serious and you know we're a better couple because of it I mean we still have our moments we're not perfect um but i mean it really helped us be able to open up a little bit and communicate so that i mean that really did help i think that's a really really great thing it's funny so uh sort of skipping around all over here but because it's on point one of the big pieces of news since if if if, if nobody has followed me along in the last year and a half uh if you if you listen to the last episode of the show a year and a half ago i was for weeks on end just crying uncontrollably oh, so sad. <laughs> on the radio going through a horrible breakup it was embarrassing and, and your show um, well wait this is what i was th- not to interrupt you this is what i was thinking <laughs> about on the way here i was like so i was thinking about you because you you know i was like wow the bob show's really starting again and it was like how things at that time you're like um bob show is gonna be done you broke up with your boyfriend I mean, you were so upset about everything. I mean, you're just like, things aren't going your way. But it's so funny how, like, when you stay positive and you keep pushing forward, you found love again. You're working for Lance. You're, you know, doing this on Mondays now, and it came back around. And, like, if you keep your head up and you still, like, go forward and do your dreams and your passion, I mean, it happens. Well, that's that's one of the things. So... So to recap for anybody who doesn't know what's going on, um, so just because it's a timing thing, January 31st of last year, I broke up with my ex. We were together almost eight years. Yeah. Um, and obviously it's a devastating thing for anybody to go through. But then on top of it all, I was looking at having to stop doing the show because I didn't have enough money coming in. And then I didn't have a job. And then I'm, my boyfriend's moving out who splits half of my bills. And so everything was just... Hit you. And yeah, and, and then I got into a car accident. I had never been in a car accident before. It was like one thing after another. But the reason I did not take time off from the radio show... So like I said, so January 31st was the breakup. But then we had those Sherry's Berries... We had a Sherry's Berries Valentine's Day campaign, which was the only time I had any money coming into this show. (laughs) I remember that. So I couldn't, if if it had been any other time, I would have been like, hey guys, I got some personal stuff going on. I just need to walk away from the show for a little bit. We'll we'll be right back. Uh, And instead, I was like, I had to show up every day. For two weeks, and it was just, it was the worst of worst times. I know, Jeff said you would come in crying. Oh, you feel so poor, bad. poor Jeff. Dina had to save us one day because I literally just had to shut off my mic, shut off my camera, and I just threw to Jeff, and then Dina Dina knew what was going on, so Dina called in. So Dina and Jeff for like 15 minutes just sat and had a conversation <laughs> while I just sat over here and cried, and then I was like, and for Valentine's Day, if you want to get some Sherry's Berries, we have the discount code, The Bob Show. But, but um, look where you're but, at now. Well, so, and so that's, so that's to catch everybody up. So, but... So now I'm in this new relationship, which, funny enough, is with this amazing man that I met right here on this show. Uh, he was a guest. He was a musical guest on the show uh, a little over two years ago. And uh, we hit it off. We were just friends. I had a boyfriend. He had a boyfriend. Nothing nothing ever was more or less than that. Um, and then a year ago, he he went through a breakup right after I did. And uh, and so we started hanging out, and then he and his ex got back together, and yeah. that sort of became the end of our everything. I mean, not that there's anything going on then, but um, so we just sort of like became like text friends or whatever, and that was sort of that. And then the beginning of the year, um, when they were done and done and done for sure, uh, he reached out to me, and uh, it has been the craziest um, whirlwind romance uh that i've ever known and you look he's so happy he's he well and the reason i'm bringing this up now is i'm piggybacking on what you're talking about with the marriage boot camp because you know i do love to have real conversations on this show <laughs> um and one of the things that has struck me because we've we've definitely had our fights obviously right. we've had our fights we get along really great but we're also two major personalities and one of the things that i have appreciated so much is that in some of our fights um, you know, stuff like you said is uncomfortable and it, and it stings you. Mm-hmm. But what I've really valued in this new relationship is that when they come up or they come out, I wake up the next morning feeling inspired and motivated to do better and to be better. Right. 
as opposed to in my relationship with my ex, it was like if we would get in a fight, I'd be like, how do I just end this? Like, how do I just throw in the towel? Like, it's just got to be an easy way. You know what I mean? But you couldn't. But instead, I, I, well, I didn't, well, not even couldn't, but it was just kind of like the idea that that's your default frame of mind when things start to go wrong right. is like, how do there's just got to be a better way. Um, and instead, you know, I mean, the fighting never feels good. And, and mm-hmm. you know, and but it, it's just, it's, it's, or, it's natural. It just, it happens. And, and fighting is even a hard, is it maybe even too harsh of a term. Um, you know, sometimes it's just, Conflict struggles. I said something the wrong way. You said something the wrong way, but it didn't. That's didn't. Did, didn't cha- that's a. That, that's ninety percent of it has always been. You're so right. Has you, always been just in the in the framing of the words. You take it a different way, and yeah. then you're like, I didn't mean that. But uh-huh. if you don't talk about it, uh huh. And never well, and that's one of the brilliant things about my current relationship is we we talk and we talk, and it's just it's it's wonderful and it's magnificent, and I I, I love him to death, and it's 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 really been. A great thing, and I will tell you also piggybacking on what you said. Um, if you had told me a year and a half ago, Bob, just stay the course, right? <laughs> and everything is gonna be okay, and you're gonna have an even greater guy, and you're gonna have a great, you're gonna have a great new apartment, and you're gonna be so happy with everything. You wouldn't believe it, because you think, because at that moment, you think it, the world's over. I mean, you just think I'm never gonna find anybody like that person, and then all of a sudden, that one person comes through, and you're like. Oh, yeah, it is true. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's and the one thing that I will say, because these are many topics that have shown up on this show time and time again with our friend Marcus Kasanich, who I can't wait to have back on and uh, and Dave and our friend Ginny's dad, Dr. King, uh-huh. um, Dr. King. I made him sound like he's a Dr. Martin Luther King, but uh, Reverend King or Pastor King. I don't know. Um, Dick King is his name. Um, but that sounds even way worse. <laughs> Like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. So, King. Mr. Dick King. Uh, lovely, lovely man. He's a pastor out of Arkansas. Um, anyways, all of these things are the one thing that I can say that I did in that darkest time of my life was I leaned into my faith. I leaned into my spirituality. All of the things that we have often talked about here on this show so much that I hold so near to me. Um, it was sort of like that moment of, I can't just believe these things when everything is going good. It was like I really had to dig in and be like, okay, this too shall pass. I will get through this. Mm-hmm. You know, there's so much good in my life that will continue to evolve and push through this. And um, and that that really somehow in some way, and there were a lot of dark moments. Um, big shout out to one of my best friends on the planet, Miss Patty Carson. Um, that girl caught more of my tears than, than most. Oh. She, my aunt Heidi, they caught, they just had mops just, <laughs> just, just on the sides. But, um, but they also, you know, there's also something about the consistency and, and, you know, and the reliability of people there that you can just depend on. Yes. Um, and so it was between that and, and my faith, you know, which again, is just a topic that came up on the show so much. And, and so, yeah, so I'm in such a much better, happy place now. Um, as you said, I'm so I'm running Lance Bass's production company. Mm-hmm. So uh, there's some Lance news on our horizon. He is now co-hosting the Meredith Vieira show Monday through Friday. I'm so so please tune into that uh, because the more you tune into that, the more successful that show is, and the more successful that show is, uh, and the more it trickles down into my life. So uh, go set your TiVo right now. I'll, I'll wait. In fact, we'll just wait while you go. Actually, we'll take a break in a few minutes, and during that break, go set your TiVos to the I Meredith Vieira show. I have a question about that. Please Are they? Ask filming that now and it'll air later or no, is it's he live so he's on it now yeah it's okay live. i didn't know if like they're filming it now I'm like guessing that means season. it's not on your tivo i uh, listen i have it's to watch live. i'm gonna support lance I you love better lance. i love you better because the next piece of news has to do with you so oh, yeah. um but so he so there's so there's that so lance is that and also lance's radio show as of today andy cohen um who everybody knows from bravo and watch what happens live just got his own channel on Sirius XM. Wow. So Lance has just moved over to Radio Andy, which is very exciting. He's on right after like Sandra Bernhard and Andy Cohen has his own show. Go Lance. Yeah, it's good a, for like him. things are things are very, very good. Um, and then the thing that I'm really excited about that affects both of us is next April, mm-hmm. you, me, Jeff Schroeder, my man. We're going sailing. So 
excited. I cannot wait. Me it's too. I actually like this song. What's not to love? You guys, I've never been on a cruise before. Ever? So my first We're memory of a cruise is going to be with all you, you with guys. With all of us. Well, what sold me, too, was the, um, Lance was like, oh, wait, what was it that he told me? Oh, I can't remember. Wait, it just slipped my mind. <laughs> it just slipped my mind. Why did I? And I was like, sold. But now I can't remember. I wanted to go. I think what sold Jeff was that. Um, he gets to spend a week at sea, at sea with Lance Bass. Yes. Well, oh, this is what it was. Lance goes basically, basically going to be everybody for my wedding. And that was the best wedding, the most oh, fun yeah. I've ever been on. And everybody, I didn't know half the people there. And I had the best time. We had, that was a great wedding. Oh, the I'm best I'm very time. proud of that wedding. I, I threw that wedding. Thank you very much. You were, Bob was stressed. <laughs> he did a great job. So what we're talking about here is uh, next April we are doing the Dirty Pop at Sea. Uh, it's the Lance Bass Cruise. So basically Lance is, is getting a bunch of his friends together, uh, two of them being Jeff and Jordan. So for all of you out there who want to come and spend a week at sea with Jeff and Jordan, this is your opportunity. I'm going to be there. And I think I'm just going to break this news because I don't know if they've talked about it yet on Lance's show. But... Uh, Lance has me teaching Bob aerobics on the show <laughs> on the boat. <laughs> Are you serious? Mm -hmm. How funny. Well, everybody has to do something, so we're figuring out probably still like what you and Jeff are gonna do. Like you and Jeff like might host karaoke, okay, or maybe host like bingo or something. But so anybody out there who's been on the fence, you're gonna actually get to interact with us. Like it's not a, it's not nothing private or personal. Like it's it's not just like we're on the boat. You're actually gonna get to interact with us. So the way it works is, uh, it's the Royal Caribbean. It's the allure of the sea. It's the biggest boat currently on the water um and it's got i think it's got like seven different boroughs slash neighborhoods so it's got like central park and it's got what? it's got them all so if you're not seeing you, have, you need to go watch the video this ship is bananas it literally has a 2100 seat theater for like mama mia what? like the entire cast of mama mia like the actual broadway show mama mia is I don't on know this if i'm gonna be watching mama mia but well so <laughs> here so here's the way that it works though is so the so the whole boat will be full as as it normally would be, but you have to book through. You go to dirtypopatsea.com and you book it through the Lance Bass portion of it, and then anybody that is part of the Dirty Pop cruise, you will then have exclusive VIP access to all of the special events that we're planning. And by we, I'm one of the people planning them, so it's going to be fun. Um, but so there'll be like daily excursions, like when we get because we're going to the Bahamas. We are. Yeah, I didn't so know we'll where do, we were yeah, going. Yeah, so we'll do like a day at the beach because we'll be out in the Caribbean and. Um, we can go, like, snorkeling, swimming with dolphins, oh all those gosh. crazy things. Um, you really need to look it up. I know. <laughs> there's so much I There's so, so much you need to know. And then, if that's not enough, what? there's even more exciting news for it. What? I don't know. I just forgot. <laughs> <laughs> this, okay, I'm, I, like, sitting here like, No, I know. What? I'm out of practice because I accidentally read the chat room at the same time that I was talking. And, and we forgot. I totally. Is somebody going? Just a surprise. Mm. The cruise. You were go talking to about Bahamas. At sea .com. We can go snorkeling. Mm -hmm. We can do those things. So many fun things that we're going like, to get to do. My boyfriend's going to sing live on the boat. Ooh. Um. I told my brother about it. I want him to come. Oh, I'm so stupid. What? Bobble Brigade. <laughs> Our bobbles have already started telling me that they've been purchasing tickets. So we're going to use this as a Bob Show Bobble Brigade meetup. So anybody out there who's listening to the show, who's been a loyal listener of the show, this could be the moment we've all talked about for a long time. We've all talked about going to Dollywood. Uh, this yeah. could this we're, We could start on the allure of the sea. Uh, and if I find out there's enough of us coming, then maybe we'll do like a special, I don't know, I'll, we'll do like a... Bob show karaoke or something, but we'll do something where we fun. all get to meet up. So it's going to be a good time. So you all should really, really consider. And strangely enough, and trust me, I don't have a lot of money myself, but um, strangely enough, it's not that expensive. I heard cruises right now are the best thing to do because it's a lot cheaper than doing the usual, getting plane tickets and booking a hotel, taxis, all that. Yeah, I mean, it's I mean, it's it still costs money, but it's it's anywhere between like nine hundred and four nine hundred and fourteen hundred dollars. You can you can for three hundred dollars you can go down you can go down you can put down a down payment right now okay. for three hundred dollars and then you have until I think it's April. like January or oh, okay. February or something to finish paying it off so it's kind of like hundred dollars a month just sort of throw it. I know the holidays are coming up but different ways to do it you can also go to SiriusXM.com forward slash I think it's called Dirty Pop Cruise 
I think that's what it is. Uh, and you can enter to win. There's a they're they're giving away two tickets over there on Sirius XM. So it's going to be a ton of fun. I'm super super excited I'm about so it. So excited. And um and so me Jeff Jordan uh, as of today Fortune Feimster was announced. She's going to be there doing stand up on the boat. Um and there's some other people that are coming that have not yet been announced that I can't quite say yet, but. Keep paying attention. You're going to want to go. That's all I'm going to say. Um, let's take a quick break okay. so we can sort of like reset here and see how we're doing. Okay. Um, Dina, I know you're out there listening somewhere, and uh, I I just couldn't resist. So this is for you, Dina, and we're going to be back in just a moment. I'm dreaming of Union Pizza Company. Whoa, real Chicago-style deep dish in L.A. How is that possible? Too much fakeness in Southern California, but I eat the all-natural Union Pizza Pies, and now I am real. I feel good, natural, and the smoking hot killer New York pies. No more fake pizzas on stripper poles. Oh, wait, that was another dream. Check out unionpizzacompany.com for more info. Avoid pizza delirium and eat responsibly natural and awesome pizza. Great pizza dreams found here. Union Pizza Company, powered by passion. Hi, this is Marianne Williamson, and you're listening to The Bob Show. Lucky you. You're listening to The Bob Show, exclusively on UPN Radio, with your host, Bob Merrick. I'm not going to lie, I totally miss this. <laughs> no, it's so fun. It's because I'm here, that's why. It is. No, but I miss all these sounds. I haven't heard all these these bumpers. I haven't heard any of these. In, it's been a year and a half. I know. That's a long time. Did every, Could everybody hear that? Ooh, uh, yeah, everyone was that? listening to it. I love that song. That has been my song of the summer, and that's a brand new version of it from Pentatonix. Yes, that's like my summer jam. And then Justin Bieber's new song, What Do You Mean? What do you mean? I, 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 I like beat. that one, too. I love that one, too. My boyfriend and I have been watching these um, these videos on YouTube that are so funny, I can't take them. They're called Worst Performance Ever. And so basically it's like they're taking like these live performances or like the music video because they did yeah. one for Justin Bieber. And they're completely redoing the sound. So it's the actual live performance. The Ed Sheeran one is one of the funniest things I've ever you seen. You have to show it to me. I will. There's an ed- when you come over, I'll yeah, show it yeah. to you. Um, there's an Ed Sheeran one, and there's a oh my god, there's a Jesse J one. But they also have one for the new Justin Bieber, and it is so funny. They're called worst performances ever. They're on YouTube, so go check them out. Um, so everyone in the chat room, Jordan, yes, uh, keeps talking about how stressed out you are about uh, your wedding. Are you getting married? <laughs> No, we're taking oh, forever. My uh, God. I okay, so I I don't know. I'm like not that. I've always been this way. It's not because of like Jeff, but it's like with anybody. I always knew like if I got married, I've just never been that type that I want the big fairy tale wedding, you know. And you like my girlfriend that's getting married. We I I was just on her bachelorette party. She wants you know she's done everything organized by the books how most people do their wedding. And I just don't care about it. Uh, I'm more so. How much would you pay somebody to just deal with all of it for you? Because I know somebody that you're looking at that would knows. I would every- totally <laughs> pay you just to do everything because I could care less. All I need him to do is just to show up. Mm-hmm. And I want it to be more like a fun thing. Um, my like I, a couple people I've talked to, they're still paying on. Oh wedding. yeah, no, I don't believe in and all that. And it's not. I, I know Jeff always says, like, where he comes from, he grew up kind of, like, in an Italian neighborhood, and I, those are some of the, besides Lance's, those are some of the nicest weddings I've ever been to. And, you know, where I'm from, we don't have weddings like that. Like, it's more low-key. And so, um, yeah, I just, I don't care about the flowers. I don't care about all that. What just, if yeah. this is an option? We could do a double wedding on the cruise and have Lance officiate it. We'd have to talk <laughs> to you. <laughs> Wait, because I'm thinking of family. I love it. Don't forget this is radio. The silence was deafening. <laughs> Guys, I'm thinking like my mom's got to be there. I mean, if my mom. They're all and- welcome. The cruise is open. Like we've got, we've got cabins to fill. I know. I got it. We. I mean, we have Don't to get our family. Don't you want to do a double wedding? Just I, would, I mean, I would do it if I could make sure all of our family was there. They can't. They're all invited. Jeff would lose his mind if Lance officiated his wedding. Oh my gosh, Jeff loves Lance. <laughs> I think Jeff loves Lance more than me. <laughs> 
<laughs> that would be I mean I'm just I'm just putting it out there. It, we could make this happen. Have Lance put on something in sync because mm-hmm. Jeff would be like, Oh my gosh, I'm a boy band because Jeff uh, loves Lance was so cute a couple weeks ago when he was on his way to the to the thing with Jeff. Uh he's like he's like, I pulled out some boy band stuff for Jeff and I to wear. And Jeff oh. thought it was the because <laughs> Jeff goes before he left the house, he goes, Should I wear like something boy band? I go, Yes. <laughs> I go, Okay, we need to go. I was getting all excited. I go, let's go to like the store and let's go get you something make you look like a boy band and he's like no i'm not gonna do that and then he's like i'm just gonna wear my thing and then lance comes in and brings his two jackets like boy band jackets oh my gosh that like made jeff's debt <laughs> it did because jeff secretly wants to be in a boy band oh uh, well that it's not so it's not very much of a secret <laughs> um wait let's talk really quickly about this engagement because that's one of the big things that happened in yes. our time away um wow that was a crazy a year ago i know was it a year uh, that, a year well, it was ago. oh yeah because it was this time last year because yeah. well so i it was one of jeff was very nervous about telling me which i thought was so funny because we all know i can keep secrets by the way very well um but he had he had gone to me because he had me trying we were gonna try to get jason raz to come yeah, to come and sing at the thing that. and um but we didn't quite we didn't we uh, Jason was on tour or something, but so that was what, so Jeff told me. So I knew that it was going to happen, and and uh, and then I coincidentally, Lance and I, Lance was doing Entertainment Tonight that day. We were at CBS Radford oh, that day. Saw. Well, we were there, and we were there talking to we were talking to Allison Grodner, and and you guys were all, and you were there, but you didn't know. And I and I was like, keep me away from her. Oh. Like I was so, and then you were texting me. You were like, "Oh, are you at CBS?" Oh, and I'm like, "We just left." And I'm like, "We hadn't just left." That's right. Because we posted the photo with Allison, and I'm like, "I didn't want to be anywhere near you because I can't lie." You're right. And you just thought you were there to like host a veto competition. You guys, or something. you had me so thrown off. Well, I know I've said. Oh, because nobody would talk to you. That's right. Yeah, everybody ignored me. Well, the day I went to work with him, he did his show, the um, his live chat, and then we had to go to CBS. Well, I think because I was in a bad mood that morning because, okay, so I was thinking Jeff was cheating on me. I was like (laughs) almost positive he was cheating on me because he was putting passcodes on things. He was being weird. I was like, okay, he doesn't like me anymore (laughs) or he's cheating. And my poor mother, I'm calling her all upset. I'm like, you know, should I just break up with him? You know, because maybe he doesn't have the heart to break up with me. And um, and you're probably feeling it because I like I know you kept reaching out to me and I wouldn't I, I was just I I would like send like a, a little text message be like oh sorry I'm busy <laughs> yeah I mean <laughs> because I was too afraid to have a conversation with you you stayed away from it me it was Matt the stayed. biggest because it was like the biggest <laughs> and okay I noticed everything that day Jeff had his live chat um everybody was wearing all black and Jeff goes you didn't even pick up on that because Jeff said I will went to the bathroom and he looked at everybody and was like. You all could have wore something different than black. <laughs> and I think because I was mad and my mind was spinning. Because when we were going there, you he was like, off. what's up with the attitude this morning? I was like, oh, nothing. Nothing at all. <laughs> and I was like, now I got to go to CBS and act like I'm happy. And I'm not even happy. And, uh, and uh, you know. And so, yeah. Uh, but after, I felt so bad. I felt so. I was like, this is why. He was like, I feel so much better. And Allison told me. She's like, oh. He was having the hardest time, like keeping oh, it he from was you. So, he was so stressed out. He called me a couple days before. He was just so stressed out and so. And he would disappear. Yeah. I'm like, where did he go? <laughs> and then that's why too. I'm like, all right, who is this whore? <laughs> see, that's interesting because see, Brad and I spend as much time together like as you and Jeff do. We're always together. So I think if all of a sudden, yeah, I think it would be very obvious when all of a sudden. Oh, but I just I threw Brad a surprise party for his birthday. And there were a couple moments that I was just I, like, gonna well, and I had to, I had to figure because the place I was going to go for his birthday was uh, was this restaurant around the corner from our house. And so all of a sudden I was like, I'm going to go walk Gus. And, like, and so I like take Gus for a walk. But I had like had this specific time set for a meeting because I was meeting yes. with the manager. But then so then I had to take Gus over there and like tie him up. outside. Oh. But, you know, because it's like hard to try to figure out those times. Oh, yeah. That, that pocket of time to like just coincidentally disappear i know how you felt i did jeff a surprise birthday party and i, <laughs> I felt stressed trying to hide it from him and yeah, thank god i, I had matt help me i was like oh matt's working a people event and yeah. <laughs> uh, we're gonna go here which really helped because matt goes yeah and then they had wristbands for it so it was around that time entourage the movie was coming out and that's like jeff's favorite movie so i told him he was going there to meet somebody from entourage which i have no idea who anybody <laughs> on there is and um yeah, and I was able to pull it off. That is so, so but anyways, 
Well, I hate surprises, and I'm glad you guys don't have any more on the horizon that I need to at no. least keep from each of you. Oh, I my could. gosh. Um, so I'm getting a little bit of kickback here. I'm getting it on my cell phone, and I'm getting it in the chat room. Um, I am not engaged. <laughs> and my boyfriend says, don't you think you need to propose first? So I guess we're not doing a double wedding on the cruise. <laughs> I didn't even know he was listening. Whoopsie. <laughs> <laughs> I was just throwing out ju just some fun general ideas of things we could do to make the cruise really interesting for all of those people out there on the fence about buying tickets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> How was your Labor Day, Jordan? <laughs> oh, because... <laughs> you guys, my Labor Day, oh, Lord. It was in <laughs> Vegas. Bachelorette party. It was, um, it was long. It was so long. Okay, wait. I have exhausting. one story. So I've been to a couple of those pool parties, you know, where it's like a rager. They got all oh, the they techno look, they music. They look so miserable to me. So my girlfriends all want to go. Some of them, it was their first time in Vegas. And I was like, guys, I am not going to that. There's nowhere to sit. It costs money to get in the door. It's just miserable. It's not fun for me. And there's girls walking around in high heels and they're in bathing suits. I'm like, what are you doing? Where are your flip-flops? So... Anyways, they all went, and I told them to leave me at the pool. We stayed at Planet Hollywood. I actually really like Planet Hollywood. And I go, we have a DJ here at Planet Hollywood. <laughs> we got chairs we can lounge in. It's all There's normal. There's water in the pool. <laughs> yeah. I Well, I filled up my water bottle with alcohol, and I was just <laughs> sipping on my water bottle. Because after a couple days in Vegas, it's like you look at your bank account, and you're like, wait, where did uh, that yeah. go? And then, you know, I'm the type. I get a few drinks in me, and I'm like, what do you want to drinks drink? Drinks for everybody. And again, <laughs> some guy was like, it's my birthday. I was like, Patron shot. And I was like, why <laughs> did I do that? I was, whatever. Weirdo. Uh. So, um, yeah, anyways, my girlfriends went to that pool party. I stayed by myself. I ended up making friends at my pool. I no hung out with these there. couples from New Orleans. I met this girl, I think, from Tennessee. She was there on her 40th birthday. She was, like, with 10 other girls. So I had the best time. Next thing I know... All my girlfriends slowly are trickling in. People are crying. All this drama. <laughs> I told them before they went, make sure you get a locker. Your stuff will get stolen. What happened? <laughs> Half of them got their stuff stolen. Uh, uh, cell phones, driver's license. It was just a hot mess. And I was like, thank God I stayed at Planet Hollywood. Uh, yeah, see, that's the worst. We did. We went to uh, Palm Springs. I think just last the same weekend you went. Yeah, and uh, we didn't know because we did this. Um, we'll do it at, like Priceline, so you get the last minute. And uh, we got to the hotel, and literally we're pulling into Palm Springs, listening to the radio, and they're like, "Coming this weekend at the Riviera in Palm Springs is the pool party of the century. <laughs> you don't want to miss it. We've got DJs here, and we've got DJs there. We've got your club music here, and we've got your rave music here." And I'm like, I'm like. Mm did he just say our hotel? <laughs> and sure enough, we got to the hotel and we had to wear wristbands. Was it crazy or was yeah, it, it good? It was gross. Contr oh, it was gross. I was about to say, I thought you were going to say, oh, it was fun because they do have. I would stay at that hotel again, but not on a holiday weekend. Not on it, a was, holiday. it was, it was, it, well, it was just, it was, it's just gross. I like Palm like, Springs. Like we literally, I love Palm Springs. I'm just saying like, but like, it was like this really loud music and like the people who had their shirts off shouldn't. Like it's one of those situations. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And every, and like the, like, I'm like, we're, we're, first of all, there's not a single chair available as we're walking around the pool. And I find like, there's like one guy, I'm like, I, I guess he's kind of hot. You know, because he had a nice body, and then I got to his face, and he had like plucked his eyebrows. He like he was totally like that guy that you were with on Marriage Boot Camp. Oh, what's his name? The situation, <laughs> yeah, like Jersey Shore. Like I was like, I'm like, get me out of here. So sh we actually went and hung out in the kids or the family pool, so we could just you know. That always kind of blows my. And I'm not. I don't mean this like mean, but sometimes at like the pools, some people it's like. And the, they're walking around in something, and oh. you're just like, what are you doing? We were looking at this one woman who we shouldn't have been having to see in the beginning, but she had, like, put on so much, like, cheap sunscreen, but it looked like a silver. <laughs> <laughs> it was like this. And she didn't. She looked like the hippopotamus in um, uh, Fantasia with the little tiny sundress. Yeah. Oh <laughs> but my. she was in a two-piece. So... <laughs> I saw dress for your weight, ladies. I don't have any problem if you're overweight, but dress for your weight. Well, and then she had a big dangling diamond. -y, How old was she? Oh, 45. Big old dangly okay. diamondy thing coming out of her belly button. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Well, that's kind of like I was about to say in Vegas. There was this woman. I had to be like late. 50. She had to be like my mom's age wearing something barely covering her boobs. It was like a 
It looked like something if you're about to strip. It like <laughs> went over her head and it went all the way down here, and then like went. She's up. motioning her. And I, w- and I was her just stomach. sitting there like, oh my gosh, like this is something a twenty year old wears, mm-hmm. not somebody your age, which yeah, is dress fine. Your age. Whatever dress, if that if that if she makes her feel sexy, whatever, wear it. But I'm just saying, I was just sitting there, and in my head, I was like, if I was her age, would I be able to wear it? I couldn't. <laughs> or I was thinking about my mom. I'd be mm, like, Mom, yeah. take that off. So, some things should not be done. We literally only have a couple minutes oh, left, yeah, and sorry. there's one big thing that we do have to talk about. Yes. Um, because it's been so strange. We made it, I made it all last year, and I didn't get to talk about it. What? And now the season's almost over. Big Brother. We have to talk Big Brother for oh at least two minutes. Oh, my gosh. We'll talk super fast. Um, super fast. So... I hope everyone's caught up, but if not, um, so I I do not know who, uh, I know who is on the block right now as of Sunday's episode. So other than that, I don't know anything that's going on. I just got caught up on all my stuff. What do we think about Vanessa's game? And I apologize to everybody out there. We're alienating. We're going to go fast. I don't know. It's so crazy. Like, she's good. She deserves to win because I feel like she's caught everybody that's gone home. It's because of her. But I don't like her game. At all. I don't, this isn't my favorite season, to be honest. I feel like there were some great, great characters at the beginning of the season. And they all got got knocked out. out. They all got knocked out early. I miss you, Clay. And so. I miss you. That's why I went (laughs) went to Jeff's uh, Oh, I know. You were the worst. You should have seen everybody (laughs) that works over there. (laughs) He walked in, and he's so much bigger in person. Oh, yeah, he is. And broad shoulder. He just Uh. looks like a clay doll. (laughs) (laughs) He just looks I, like a doll. I love Je- well. I love Jeff talking about the fact that he's like Jeff feels ugly next to him because it's like I mean he's he is beautiful. It Clay's twenty three. Jeff's thirty seven. Oh, you know. Yeah. But Jeff's no, like, oh, he's, he's. I always tell Jeff I'm like you're sexy, love. <laughs> Even though. If you um, well, we got to do something really cool this year. We finally got to go behind the walls. It's- have and you, not you, that many people get to do that. No, so. I uh, trust me. It was like one of the another reason I'm like, where's my radio show? It was, and we weren't allowed to take any photos. It yep. was the coolest, craziest, weirdest thing it's I've so ever awesome. done. Getting to actually be inside the house, and there's moments. So like, because we and we did this early on, like Clay and Shelly, they were all still, they were all still in the house, and so you get. To, it's like being at the zoo. It's really like being and at the you're zoo. Just you're watch. standing on the other side of the glass. And they cannot see you. They can't see. But they're and they're six inches. They're sleeping six inches from you. The same way you go to the zoo and there's like a tiger, you know, just like laying there in the You kinda get excited because you're like, Oh my I've been watching you all summer oh, and yeah. I know who you are and you have no idea who I am. It's always weird seeing everybody in person. Like if we get a chance to go back in the house. And I, um, like last year we went back in the house. I got, I all of a sudden get nervous, like as if I'm meeting a celebrity or something. Well, I don't know we why. we spend so much time watching them. It's I know. A, it's a weird thing. Who was, who do you want to win? Let's do that. Well, Johnny Mac at this, I mean, I just love Johnny I love Mac. I know Johnny he went, but he just, he's so funny. He's so sweet. He is. I just love that goofy little, <laughs> like, yes. I can't even do it. <laughs> like, I don't even, I can't I'm even, like, what is I can't that? even do it right. And but, then, uh, what did you, what do you think, it, what did you think about the twins with Austin? Um, I'm so grossed out. Well, 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 okay. So let me. I have to tell a really funny thing that happened while we were in the walls, um, because I know we have to go in a moment. But really, while we were in the walls, Julia was at the kitchen cooking. Yeah. And so we're like, we're so we're watching her <laughs> standing there, and she's like cooking eggs, but she's eating something. That she had made a bagel with cream cheese that she's shoving into her face, but she's shoving it into her face like. Right in front of us. Like, that is her. Like she she's has no idea. just no idea. She's fourteen inches, and I'm just gonna say it. Lance was standing next to me, so <laughs> so we're standing there watching, and she's shoving this bagel in her mouth, and a piece of it falls out of her mouth onto her floor. I swear to you, we all gasped because we were just dying because we knew. First of all, I wasn't sure she was gonna pick it up at all. Then when she finally did, I was so certain that if we hadn't been watching her, she would have put it in her mouth. <laughs> I'm oh, just, I'm so sure. Like if she hadn't remembered that she was on TV, she was so ready to just shove that bagel back in her mouth. So that was um, that was my big exciting moment. But as far as Austin goes, I think he could actually be good looking if He's, he would shave just yes, everything. Yes. But because he has all that gross hair, I can't I can't even get into his gameplay. Like he just there's there's just something I, I see him and I just want to go take a shower. Like it doesn't help me. So on one hand, I think he's actually strangely played a good game. Right. I like that he's smarter than like Brenchel and all these other people that get in these showmances and then like, oh baby, whatever you want. I mean, even Clay did it with Shelly. Right. You know what I mean? I like that he's willing to be like, look, Liz, like 
like I'm I'm here to win the money. We can have we can stay in love outside of the thing. Where's his girlfriend in real life? I've been waiting for Julie Chan oh to do an interview my gosh. with the girlfriend. That's, I told Jeff, I go, I hope they do a tape package. Oh, please. Because I want to see what she looks like. I want to see what she thinks. Oh, my God, because I know. how would you feel if Jeff went back in that house, let's say no engagement at all, and we were still dating, and then he started dating somebody or making out? I'd be like, what the heck is yeah. going on? Yeah, it's weird. So weird. And it's so weird. But so anyways, the twins drive me crazy. Um, I liked it more in the beginning when it was just them two and they would change. Oh, yeah. I liked it when there was only one of them. They were so funny. Some, thing, some things are better left less. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I just, yeah, this season's not my favorite. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't hate it, though. I li I, I I, I've i loved that it's all new. I liked, I really liked that it was all fresh meat. And please, why does Jesse have to keep coming back in the house? Why? <laughs> Just why? And so my boyfriend's watching it for the first time, and he's never seen it before. And they, the, I was in the other room walking back into the living room when I heard Jesse's voice, and I'm like, no, it is not happening. Yeah. And there he was, Mr. Pectacular. Yep. Ugh. I know. Barf, barf, barf. Um, okay, I want to say congratulations. Um, so at the top of the show and at the very end of my show, you always hear that, put it together and what have you got? Yeah, 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 yeah. That is my dear friend, Ashley Arison, and she and Ashley, she and her husband, Aben, uh, just welcomed the cutest little baby just a couple weeks ago. Um, and so I want to say congratulations to them because uh, they've been with me since the very beginning of this show. I don't even know how many years it's been, like eight years ago that I started the show. Um, so I'm super excited for them. My little sister had a little baby. Um, I'm sure there's pl plenty of other little babies and everything else that we're going to talk about uh, as we come back every single Monday. This was literally just an hour for Jordan and I to sort of catch up <laughs> kind of with each other. I know. We <laughs> haven't seen each other. I never. Bob's uh, so busy now. I know. But we're going to go home and have margaritas and eat and tacos. tacos. And, uh, and then we're going to really catch up. But uh, but for everybody out there listening, thank you guys so much. What a welcome back. I mean, you guys have uh, completely clogged up the chat room, which makes me feel so good. Because, again, I was like, what if nobody even cares? People love you, Bob. People, people are going to tune people. in. And now that people know that it's on Mondays. Mondays, 4 p.m., one hour once a week. That's all you got to do. No, no more of this uh, 10 hours, two hours every morning, five days a week business. Um, and so next week we'll have a guest. Jeff Schroeder will be right back here with me as co-hosting the show. Uh, we also have to find out what's going on with Brendan. Our favorite beloved Brendan went out and became the face of Staples. That I saw. Okay, I was flipping through the channels, and then I go, hey, that's the guy uh, that was on Bob's show. And <laughs> Pay or Jeff goes, yeah, he's like the Staples guy. That's so yeah, awesome. I'm so excited. See, things got better. See? We just we just put the show on hiatus and things got better for everybody. Yes. So uh, you, you got to have him in here. No, I know. Well, I know now we have to have him on as a guest because now he's too big of a deal to come in and. Well, you can talk about <laughs> it. <laughs> no, we will. So we'll catch up with Brandon. I want to catch up with some of you. I want to Colleen. Uh, we're gonna have you call in uh, when we get closer to this Big Brother finale, which is in just two weeks. So we'll be can excited you about that. that. All right. No. Before we close out, yes. Who, who do you think's gonna win out of everybody left? We don't know who won the veto. It has to be Vanessa. I don't know. I don't know who won the veto, but I, I mean, it has to be Vanessa. I mean, it's it's going to be Vanessa, unless it, well, here's where Vanessa may have just cut her own throat. Vanessa is stupid for the fact that she went after Johnny and Steve because here's yes. where, because here's the problem. Yes. Liz and Austin are still a showmance. They're still in it together, and she's got Julia in the um in the jury house. So she's already like her numbers are already stacked completely differently, and it's so easy for them to turn around and get rid of Vanessa. Yep. Um, as opposed to Steve and Johnny Mac have no one in the jury house, and she can easily beat Steve or Johnny Mac in the final two. Yeah, I don't understand. So but I don't know why she went that other direction. And I think for as smart as she plays, she plays way too neurotic. Right. So that's that's all after I can say this now. many else this is the last thing i'll say after this many days that they've been in the house you kind of lose it a little bit and i think they're all kind of you know you lose your mind 72 days for me was, was the that first one 72 days was your total days? oh yeah tomorrow will be a year ago that i won big or i'm sorry six years ago for big brother that i won so yours was only a 72 day house because now they're 100 aren't now they now they're 100 i could not do 100 oh no. my goodness 72 days was a lot that's insane yeah so they're you're kind of like all right you're you're shot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Well, that when I always think about it too, like even when I think back to how long ago it was that we went and visited the house. Yeah, that was weeks ago. Mm -hmm. like, and, then, and those people have just been in those four walls. And you start looking back and thinking about 
wait, who was the second person evicted? Who was the third person? And every season you do that, and you're like, wait, that seems like a year ago that they were gone. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. But I'll keep talking, or we're going to talk another hour. I know. Okay, we're going to go. Um, thank you for having me. Oh, I had so much fun. Well, and you know you're going to come back, but um, but more importantly, just thank you so much for being here on this first one. I literally, okay, I was going to start the show with this, now I'm going to end it with it. I I don't normally have those dreams. You know how people like, say they have dreams about like when something's going to happen and right. um, you know, like they're being chased or something. I had the craziest, most awful dream last night um, because I was so stressed out about doing this show because I was just like, I've just been so underprepared and I'm like, I don't know if anybody's going to listen everything else. And I had this dream that I w- drove down to San Diego and I was getting text messages from Tony and he was like, he's like, you're supposed to be here loading your show. And I'm like, and I'm like, oh no, I just got to San Diego. Um, maybe I can upload everything from here and I can do it from my phone. And, you know, and you, he's like, well, Jordan's already in here too. And then... Um, and then you know you do that thing like where you're trying to run in your sleep, but you and can't. You're, and you're like you're, you're running. And in actually, place. and you're but you're actually going really, really slow. Yes. I was trying to get back up here from San Diego, and I was like going nowhere fast. It was like the worst feeling <laughs> in the world. So I'm so glad that none of that happened, and then I'm here. And well, now it's over. Many, many thanks to everybody. Please follow my friend Jordan Lloyd. Um, on, yes, on, on Instagram, Instagram at BB Jordan Lloyd. That's also where she is on. Um, Twitter mm-hmm. and on Periscope. Maybe we'll do a little periscoping later on tonight so you guys can check us out on Periscope. Yeah. Um follow me on the at the Bob Show. The yes. B A U B show. Um and stay tuned on everything for um who we've got some upcoming guests and everything else. I cannot wait to see who I book. I'm so You always have good <laughs> guests. I'm so excited to he see He always does. I'm so excited to see who I reach out to. Thank you guys so much for uh just hanging with us all these months and and still Still caring and still being here. It really does mean a lot, and it's exciting. And uh, and thank you to my boyfriend for uh, inspiring me and pushing me to get back on the air. Uh, I didn't realize how much I missed it, but I do. I'm glad I'm here. Aww. So uh, uh, thank you to him, and thank you to everybody. Uh, we're going to say goodbye, but we'll be back next Monday right here on UBN Radio, 4 p.m. Have a great week, everybody. We'll see you then. I like this song. Me too. My rebel heart It's great fun. <laughs> great dagger. Cut. All right. Put it together and whatever you got. Be able.